three and they're all big ones. Oh man, that's insane. I hope you guys can see that. Oh. So I set out to shoot a video in an hour and uh, what a crazy hour that was. We've got two doubles, uh, one triple and caught 17 and a half pounds in about an hour. All off one spot too. So I just pulled up on a spot. I'm gonna target some bass. And I'm gonna be using the A-Rig, which is short form for Alabama rig, um, otherwise known as an umbrella rig. So what this thing is, is you have your line tie at the head here at the front, and then you've got five wires coming off of it. Now where I'm fishing, I'm only allowed to have four hooks on any given bait. So this one here, it's just a swim bait that I have tied up onto the swivel. And then um, these four are my, my hook baits. So it's a large profile, and what it seems to do is if you get a fish on this thing, it's more of a reaction strike than anything. So what I do is I let it fall. If you don't have live scope, let it fall to the bottom and then start reeling. But I can kind of see when I'm getting close, so I stop it so I don't get snagged. And I reel it really quickly. And that's a big fish. That's a bass, it's a really big one. Oh, it's two. I had two. I got two again. Oh, I came off. Nope, it's still there. Two big ones. Three big ones. Oh, just two. That was insane. All right, first cast. You got a double. So that's the nice thing, is if you have <clears throat> a school fish down there, you reel this over their heads. A lot of the times, because you have four hooks on there, you're going to catch more than one. Uh, there was a third one uh, coming up to that thing, and at some points I had two, some points I looked like I might have had three, sometimes it looks like I lost one. These are both about three pound fish. That's the effectiveness of an A-Rig. It, uh, it really fires a school of fish up, especially if they're inactive to anything else. And you can catch pretty well an entire bag of your fish in one cast for a tournament. So I'm gonna back right off that spot again. There's one. Oh my gosh. This one feels big. This is awesome. You will catch walleye on this too, but this feels like it's a big smallmouth. Oh my, there's another one was following it. Yeah, that's like a four. <laughs> Beauty. We'll get her back. All right, let's do that again. So how you set your baits up on this thing to make it track straight is pretty important. I'll get into that after I catch some more of these fish. Another one. That one's not as big. But if it's got some buddies, I might be able to hook another one. A lot of times on a spot, biggest fish are gonna bite first, especially when you throw this thing.
That's like maybe a two, two and a half. So that time I was a little too high. <clears throat> it's very important to be back away from the fish as much as possible. So if you don't have live scope, what you can do is set a waypoint down, turn your scale on your graph, mine says 50 feet, and take just a rough estimate, I'm about 50, 60 feet away from it, um, cast in that direction, let it hit bottom. And you don't wanna reel too fast because you don't wanna come too far up over their heads. You wanna reel it just over the head, maybe, maybe about a foot over their heads. That was fast. This one feels like a walleye. Nope. So a lot of bass on this spot. There's one. Missed it like twice. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> Ooh, I might have to check out big on this one. It's about the same size as that other one, but about the same size as that other big one. All right, so I got about 50 feet back of where we cast it over to catch that fish. I'm gonna cast about 20 feet past it. Let it sink a bit and then pull it right over the top. That one feels good too. Got two, I think. Two again? Two again. <laughs> These ones aren't big, but two doubles nonetheless is pretty cool. I set up a pretty redneck looking camera so we can see what's going on when the A-rig uh, passes, what an A-rig looks like as it's falling, what the fish look like, and then what happens when, uh, when I roll by them fuzzy object out there, that's a brush pile. So somebody took it upon themselves to uh, sink a tree on this spot so that the bass can use it. Pretty sure that's illegal to do, but nothing I can do about it, except for catch them out of it, I guess. So I went just past it 70 feet. And then when I reel past this thing, I want to have it over top so I don't catch the tree in any way. So I'm going to speed up right here, get it above the tree. And now they should all kind of fly out this backside here at me. There's two there. There's a couple more right underneath it, but they're pretty inactive too now. So there's a lot of fish all throughout this structure, but it definitely seemed like the bigger ones were out um, off the end, closer to the deep water. As I've come up towards shore, it's still about the same depth, but uh, they don't seem to be quite as big up here. 
So before Buddy trolls over my spot again, I'm gonna turn around. Look at all those things coming. There's no way I haven't got bit yet. There we go. That feels good. Do I have two again? Three. Oh my God, I have three. <laughs> Please stay on, please stay on. Three and they're all big ones. Oh man, that's insane. I hope you guys can see that. Oh. <laughs> oh. Three. Oh my, that's a heavy net. Three in one cast. I've never done that before. So I'm only allowed to have four, so I'm going to weigh this one. Three, three, seven. Nice. That's a beauty. So the first one was a three, three, seven. This one's a three, nine, zero. Three nine zero for that one. This one. Three two six. It'll be number three. This one. Three, two, one. That one's number four. This one will be number five. Three, seven, two. Number five. So on the scale, we have 1748. Now in this area, a 20 pound bag is kind of the benchmark. It's super impressive. I've never personally done it um, in a documented setting before. I've done it, you know, just fun fishing and stuff, but never kept track of it or anything. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a series tracking my journey on the way to actually cracking the 20 pound benchmark. I think I'm gonna call it breaking 20. So for the whole rest of the fall on my journey, trying to break that 20 pound benchmark. I can't believe we got three on one gas. One of them was like the biggest one we have. I'm pretty sure. Either the biggest or the second biggest one. So it looks like those fish are at the very end of it where they seem to be a little bit bigger, are set up right on the top again. So. Gas just passed some. They're at about 50 feet, I cast it to about 80. Getting it down to the bottom now, and reeling. There's one. Feels good. I mean, they all feel good. That's the cool thing about an area, because they just crush it every time. Oh my goodness, look at all the ones falling hit. Maybe we'll get another one. That's insane. That's insane.
And I don't think it'll help. That thing had like 20 with it though. I think one of the biggest tips I can have for you if you're gonna be using an Alabama rig is to retie after every every other fish. <clears throat> this bait's really heavy, and even though you're gonna be using heavier line, I like to use 17 pound, 16 pound or 17 pound. I find 20 is a little too heavy. It's a lot less pliable, so you get a lot less action out of it and casting distance. But even though the line is heavy, you still have to retie it quite a bit because it gets under a lot of stress. Casting it and, you know, catching three fish at once and all that good stuff. So here's your A rig. This is the weapon that did all the damage, otherwise known as an Alabama rig or an umbrella rig. Um, where I'm fishing right now, I'm only allowed to have four hooks on, on this bait. So you can see that little white one there is just snapped on that, uh, on the snap. And then these other four are my hooks. So what I do is I like to make a few of them look a little bit different. Now, the other thing I like to do so that it runs true is I'll use three different, well, I'll use two different types of heads. So this is my dummy, which is at the top. It's got no head on it, so there's, and it's a small bait, so there's the least amount of resistance. If you look over here, this one's only an eighth ounce head with another small swim bait. So it's gonna have a lot less resistance as well. And then the center one is gonna be a quarter ounce or three eighths ounce, depending on how, fit, how deep you're fishing. Um, right now I have a three eighths ounce on there. And then these other two, are the exact same and they are a 3 8 ounce as well. So what that does is these two bottom ones are the heaviest so they're going to keep the A-rig anchored as you're pulling it through the water and then your lighter setups are at the top and so you're never going to have any twirling as it's going through the water and you're reeling it. Having those two heavier heads on the bottom is going to make sure that it tracks straight and that's going to help you get a lot more bites. Another one. Don't feel that big. Okay. Just a little dude. I think this is a good way to end it though. end to a crazy hour. The A-Rig in, in some situations is just unbeatable. You're kind of shooting yourself in the foot if you're uh, if you're not using it. So give it a try the next time you go fishing and I'm guaranteeing you, you will catch more and bigger smallmouth with an umbrella rig. Mm -hmm.